What's up everyone? It's Matt Martin with The Grass Factor. Today we're going to be talking about a pre-emergent herbicide that is going to be a combination of two different products. Today we're going to be talking about Echelon. Let's jump into what exactly is going on in Echelon. Okay, so as far as active ingredients are concerned, not super overwhelming. It's nothing we haven't seen before. So we've got prodiamine and we've got sulfentrazone. Together, this is going to make up four pounds of active material in each gallon of Echelon. So, you know, if you're familiar with the prodiamine label, you'll know on that label it's four pounds of prodiamine uh, per gallon. Or if you're familiar with the dismiss label, it's right at four pounds of sulfentrazone uh, per gallon of that product. So we've got four pounds of AI here. So the way they actually run it is one part sulfentrazone to two parts prodiamine, and that's going to make up our material. All right, so we know it's prodiamine and sulfentrazone. The recommended rates on the label, these are just two that I pulled. This is going to be a four month interval. Uh, four months of protection from the sulfentrazone prodiamine combo, uh, and it's a 24 ounce rate. Uh, for those at home, you know, that's going to be 16 ounces of prodiamine to 8 ounces of sulfentrazone. So, what we see here, 8 ounces of sulfentrazone to the acre, that's a, that's a, that's a, a high rate of dismiss. Uh, and then, if we were going up to the five months of control, we're looking at 24 ounces of prodiamine and we're looking at 12 ounces of sulfentrazone. This is a yearly maximum of dismiss right here. So anyway, when it comes to incorporating this into your program, it's important to pay attention to your yearly maximums here based on how much echelon you're gonna be putting down. So let's talk about why I put down echelon. The main thing is going to be preventing nut sedge to a certain degree. Uh, per the label, you will get both post-emergent control and pre-emergent control of yellow nut sedge. Now, how much of that of the label can you take for gospel? Probably not a whole lot. Uh, you will get some residual control of yellow nut sedge, but is it going to outright prevent it altogether and you're not going to have to worry about it for the season? No. The other issue you're going to run into is purple, purple sedge is not going to be uh, affected by this. You'll probably get some suppression out of some of your Kalinga species if made at the appropriate time where you can catch it uh, post-emergently but pre-emergently, probably not going to see a whole lot. But where this can become a great tool in your program is going to be this 12 ounces to the acre of sulfentrazone. Okay, so there is anecdotal evidence at best that 12 ounces to the acre of sulfentrazone can potentially kill not just nut sedge, but it can kill nutlets still existing in the, in the soil, and you're gonna have a greater impact on killing the tubers that are in the soil as well. So, as part of getting a, a, incorporating this into your program to get to this 12 ounces to the acre of sulfentrazone, even if you're running a 24 ounce rate of it, you know, you're getting a big jump start. So for instance, if round one, you're going out with prodiamine and you know, you're going out at a 13 ounce to the acre rate. Round, round two, maybe you can go out with echelon at a 24 ounce to the acre rate and you've already got down eight ounces of sulfentrazone. Then round three, you can go out with a low rate of dismiss, four ounces to the acre, and you've got your 12 ounces to the acre of sulfentrazone and that is going to give you your greatest protection. And spraying at round three, hopefully some of it has already come up and you're able to get that extra kill on that plant. So anyway, this is actually a great tool to utilize on those properties that have nut sedge issues. Or if you have a property that is consistently, you're having to deal with Kalinga species. Um, this may be something you want to think about incorporating into it to try and get a good, you know, powerful herbicide program down in one year and hopefully eliminate those sedge species from being in that yard where the next year you're not having to deal with it. And typically when you're getting the call from a customer, it's because whoever they hired in the past 
was never able to do anything to proactively improve that lawn from year to year regarding the sedge species. So this may be something to give a whirl and see exactly how much control you can get moving into the next year. So a couple notes about the product, you know, again, surfactants, adjuvants, uh, would not be recommended with this product. Again, that's per the label. It's a hot, hot product. You could potentially cause more turf grass injury than what would be uh, acceptable. Also stating that it is injury. So your cool season turf type varieties, uh, you know, your recommended rate on that is going to be, you know, four ounces to eight ounces to the acre in any given single application. Uh, you know, and here we're talking about if you're running, you know, this 24 ounce to the acre rate of a product like Echelon, you're throwing a, you know, a, a max rate at that cool season turf. So chances are there's going to be some yellowing, some, some phytotoxic effects to the fescue plant that you may have to mow off uh, before, you know, that those noticeable effects are gone. So that may be something to explain to the customer if you're going out on the front end with a real heavy rate of echelon, say, look, you know, it's going to cause some yellowing, but this is going to be part of my program in tackling your nuts edge issue this year. And hopefully we get such a jump start on it, we're not having to deal with it year after year after year anymore. Uh, and be careful if you're running this rate. You know, how early do you want to spray that? You know, you, you may want to put this down you know, say in March, because you're you're at 12 ounces to the acre of sulfur zone, you may not want to run this on cool season lawns altogether. So keep that in mind. The other thing would be sod. So, you know, part of the label, there's a couple of different things. It says, you know, don't spray on sod, don't apply the sod unless it is uh, well rooted. Or you'll get, don't apply the sod until the corners have grown together. And then in another part of the label, let's say don't apply the sod for at least six months per, uh, after establishment. So, you know, we've got a wide variety of parameters to which you can apply this product to sod. So keep that in mind. If you're going out on cool season turf and you're using a root pruner like ProDiamine and you're using something that can cause foliar issues like sulfentrazone, it may be best if that sod hasn't been down for at least an entire year. Why risk it? Why risk it? You know, go ahead deal with the sedge that first year, and then moving into the next season, you can try and develop this 12 ounces to the acre somewhere in your program. Well, all right, y'all, that's gonna do it for my video today. Again, this is for Echelon 4SC. I hope you like it. Please, guys, please do me a favor, click like, please click subscribe, and share the video with a friend. I'd be forever in debt to you. Thank y'all, have a good one.